Looks like all the tires held air over winter. That's always encouraging. Now for the ultimate test of a quality four-wheeler. Will she start after sitting for three plus months? Let's see. Oh, Yamaha, you dirty dog. What you doing? Assessing. Oh? Assessing the damage of <gasps> winter. Old man winter. What trench? Right? <laughs> the trench hath given way. Oh my gosh. Hey, you know what I just realized? What? Don't backfill your trench. Just wait a winter. <laughs> right? All the work will be done for it'll you. It'll backfill itself. So we had this genius idea that maybe if we just busted our hump, we could get this water system in before winter. We gave it a valiant effort and the ground froze. But we did get a couple of videos out there. We'll link to those over here. Our cistern installation and also digging the trench with air. But out of this project came a really cool tool. Hey love, you know all that rock that we dug up? Yes. Do you know how it's gonna be really hard to backfill that with a shovel? I have a fantastic idea. Oh? So in the mining industry, they have this thing where like a tractor comes. And they take this big bucket full of rock and they dump it on it and it's kinda like, it's kinda like a colander like you use for canning when you dump like the fruit in and then like all the juice comes out, like that. But we're gonna build it with like two by sixes and then we're gonna use like chicken wire and we're gonna use these big like fencing staples. And we're gonna put it in there and we're gonna lean it up and then like we can move it around. And I'm gonna put it on the trailer and I'll take it to the top of the hill and then we'll filter all the dirt and now we don't have to buy backfill. Why would we buy backfill? Look at all this stuff. We have backfill everywhere. We just have to make it. Is it winter in like three days? It'll only take maybe like, it'll take the better part of a morning. Says Jesse before every month long project begins. No, 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 no. It'll be different this time. It'll take a morning and maybe like a hundred bucks. If it fails, I'll do dishes for like a month. Dishes for a month. All right. I'll hold my judgment. Let's give it a go. I'll be diggly gosh dang darn it did work. That's what we started with. Bah, big mess. Look at all those rocks. Look at those honkers. And look at all this beautiful back filly top soily looking stuff. Dang it. I still got to do the dishes. Ah. Dudes and dudettes. Let's go check it out. Why does it have to rain now? Because the camera came out. Doy. Everybody's property is south facing. Right? So Gosh, yeah. We might have to find a different way to the sister. Plan B. Gosh, what if we have to walk? <laughs> that was fun. Well, thanks for going for a ride on the four wheeler with me. This is our life, guys. Yeah, this was a <laughs> Tuesday afternoon date. Thank you. He has hand warmers. Yeah, and I block all the winds. Yeah. Perfect. It's the least I could do. Because we now have to walk, I'm gonna consider this also a cistern and trench inspection expedition. First, we have to cross the treacherous pallet bridge. Just a few days ago, these bricks were like floating. You know those floating things in Mario? When you like get on the cloud and it like floats and you like go oh, yeah. across the Mario? You collect the coins. Yeah, 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 you have to fly the cloud. Yeah, that was these <laughs> stairs. Looks like our interim water solution failed. It looks to me like it just yanked out. It kind of does, yeah. Well, there's at least one really lovely cave in in our trench. We used to just jump across the trench. That's a very bad idea. That seems like it's not gonna work I'd now. I've been walking around the one time I came up here. This used to be the jump across spot. I made it. <laughs> oh boy. I made it around. Oh. Ugh, it just makes me so sad. <laughs> yeah, what a mess. Fail. Don't talk about the soil first. They want to see the rock oh, grizzly. Sorry. Hold on. I thought this thing got completely mangled and obliterated. It did. And stuck in all the rock and backfill. It looks pretty good now, okay. though. <laughs> Check well, her out. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Uh, I definitely would do some improvements on this thing. 
slash not be so hard on it. Right. Turns out we were dropping like 200 pound rocks on this Oh thing. yeah, <laughs> looks pretty good. I yeah. mean, I ripped the bottom board <laughs> off and I don't know, a bunch of other stuff. So I'm looking at all this rock, I'm sitting on the excavator and I'm thinking about how the heck are we gonna fill this trench in? And I'm not so worried about like the dirt going back in the trench. My biggest concern was all these massive rocks. I mean, we had rocks probably 400 pounds plus uh, collapsing on either the cisterns or any of the plumbing or double encasing and everything that we're gonna put in the trench. And I'm like, okay, I don't wanna order a bunch of backfill because you can solve any problem with money, but we're trying to do this on a budget. We have all this fill dirt, so I'm like, how can we get this to work? Ding, 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 take a note from the mining industry. Did a little bit of research and found a rock filter and there's some pretty popular brands out there like a Grizzly. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't have a welder and I don't have steel, and I don't plan on using this thing for the rest of my life. So I'm like, how can I make something like that that'll do the job, but on a budget? If we build it so that it could be taken back apart and all those materials could be reused, that would be a double win. Kind of thinking like a contractor framer guy, and I'm like, if I build like a 16 on center, framed floor, well, that'll probably help filter out the biggest rocks. We just happen to have some of this kind of garden fencing laying around for the garden, but I'm like, ah, eh, we'll use it for what we need it for. So we built this two by six floor, 16 on center, threw the chicken wire stuff on there, had a couple of four by four posts, put it at about a 45 degree angle, and figured out, ah, we'll test it, and if it doesn't work, we'll try to improve on it. It worked. So do we have our own quarry now? We're, or what? we're, we're borderline miners now. <laughs> Plumbers by day, miners by night. And then it broke. One of the things we realized really quickly is that it needs to be light enough that we could transport it with the mini excavator. If this thing were made out of steel, you're not gonna move it with the mini excavator. So lightness was really important, and so wood was a good solution. The second thing I realized was chicken wire is not very strong. <laughs> Duh. So then I'm like, ah, I'll just put a lot more ribbing in. So I went back and doubled up on the ribbing. This over here is the rock that rolled off of the Grizzly, and then over here is our piles of fine. We only wanted to filter down to maybe like around four, four inch rock or a little bit less. We weren't after trying to get sand. It was more about just trying to get the Mondo rocks out of here that could potentially either fall on the cisterns or fall on the plumbing. Ugh. Ooh, that's a big one. Lesson learned. Bring gloves wherever you go. Uh. So why we're really worried about this, when our septic system was being installed, a rock like this was picked up with the excavator, and it was dropped at just the right angle that it punctured a hole in the tank. And the guy installing it said he's never seen that happen before, and they've been installing these infiltrator tanks for a very long time. It just so happens that we have really rocky soil, and while we might be fine, just push it all back in, why take that risk? Can you even lift that? Hell no, I mean, heck no. <laughs> it's as big as me, curled up in a ball, almost. We didn't filter this with a grizzly. When we come across big mama dramas like this, we just pick it up, yoink, and drop it over here. Do not drop that on your grizzly oh, if you go the oh route gosh. we did. It's so big. Well, you could about four times, and then you'll have to rebuild the thing. So yeah, I kind of took all these big rocks out as I was moving the soil around. So I'd take a bucket, and if I had any big rocks, I'd kind of just shake them out over here. And then I was turning over here, and I'd drop it into the grizzly, and I was getting the fines near, and the rocks kind of far. The One of the problems we had up here is that it's so tight, I only have enough room right in here to actually go back and forth with the excavator. So it was a bit of a like juggling act. I had to, I had to pick up the rock over here, 
put the big ones over here and then swing the boom over here and drop the rest of it in there, putting the medium sized rock over there. It's pretty crazy to watch. I'm pretty proud of this guy's ingenuity. Uh, so obviously this is not a how to or a tutorial video. We're just trying to share the idea. One thing I did really well was I bolted up here with a really substantial bolt into these rear legs because the brute force happens right here. And to kind of add to what I didn't do well, most of the rest of the grizzly is actually held together with wood screws. And as everybody knows, they have a really low shear value. So they did exactly that. Most of them ended up shearing off inside the wood. What I would probably do differently is I would use either some sort of a bracket, uh, a joist hanger type bracket so you can toenail or use bolts if you've got them laying around. Remember, this was not about going down to the hardware store and spending a bunch of money. It was about working on a budget. And testing the viability of it. We didn't know if it would work. So now that it does, we might invest a little more heavily. Well, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so when you're doing these crazy projects, it's a good idea not to just go throw money at it because if it doesn't work, now you're out the money and you still got to find a solution. Another thing I would do differently is down here at the bottom, the way I had this designed, the rocks would roll to the bottom. Thought that was a really great idea. And what I would do differently is I would actually put legs in the front and raise this entire deck up maybe as much as two feet or more. Oh, that's a great idea. What we found is that <laughs> it doesn't take very long and the rocks start to pile up on the bottom of the grizzly yeah. and they start walking their way to the top and pretty soon your effective filtering just gets to be next that's to nothing. That's actually how we ripped it is because I buried it's it getting rock. dark you kind of push the limits of it a little bit because that's what we do. What you want is this kind of side bracing right here you want this side bracing to be probably at least two feet up and you want the rear leg and, and what I, like I said, if you do the front leg, I would put the front leg just by itself with nothing else penetrating into the rock. That way when you go to lift it out, it just yoink and it's out. I yoinked it out with this cross member buried in rock and I think it's still in the rock somewhere in there because I just <laughs> yoinked it out. Um, so I'd raise the, the deck portion on the legs up. So like up here, you have plenty of room to raise this deck up like over two feet. I would do that and then I would also do that in the front, raise the front of the deck off. That way you've got room for all the rock to slough off the front of it before you have to move the grizzly. That's what ended up forcing us to move the grizzly too much was that there wasn't enough height on the deck. Don't use chicken wire. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't work bad, but if you had something like chain link fencing or some sort of other fabric, sturdy fabric, that would be a far better solution. I am shocked at how well this actually held up. Uh, most of the damage you see was done early before we had enough ribbing in there. I would probably not go the, more than six inches on the ribbing or even less. That way there's not so much strain on your fabric. There's one question you guys have already asked a lot. So let's give you some insight to that real quick. Watch this video, this one above my head right here. We dug this entire trench using a pneumatic excavator. Common question we've seen pop up. Didn't the excavator blow all the backfill away? No, it's right there. You could totally go the other way with this tool. Instead of using it to filter out the fine soil, if you needed a bunch of rock, well, you could go the other way and make a bunch of rock with it. Could we use this to build some stuff? Sure. That's not really in the plans right now, but it's not a no, never. We'll have to just see how much rock we have left over and whether or not we're gonna to have to bring in fill to complete this project. Very excited to learn how to do masonry projects, but that's really not a skill that we have right now. The beautiful thing is these rocks aren't going anywhere. So we're chomping at the bit to get this water project going again. I'm excited to work with the Grizzly and see if I can fix it, make it even better and get all the rest of that rock filtered. It'll be a lot of fun. Hopefully Alyssa doesn't fall in the trench while shooting this video. If you see this video and it's still stable, she's on stable ground. Just kidding. Just kidding. It was, that's not even funny. Okay, it's kind of funny a little bit. It's kind bit. of funny. <laughs> We're actually up here to see if there was any turkeys that fell in. Somebody said turkey babies can fall in holes Right? Like this. Oh my gosh, I will be heartbroken. I would cry. We're also trying to build a home this year or get started on building a home that's more accurate. We have playlists for so much of this stuff. We're going to link to our water playlist, which will take you through our RV water system, interim water system, this water system. We'll link to all that up here. We also are trying to do a debt-free home video series that will kind of share the strategy. We're not trying to teach you how to build a house. We're trying to show how we are trying to do it without incurring substantial debt. And we'll link to that playlist over here. For now, it's back to normalcy, down the hill.
soon, plumbing soon. This is just one more reason to buy a snowplow, because they give you this tarp thing, which is approximately the size of your four-wheeler. You buy a tarp, you get a free snowplow. Yeah, you buy the tarp. I mean, it's an expensive tarp. It's like $3,000 tarp. One more homestead hack. Sorry, I'm just dropping all kinds of hacks on you guys today. If you have rocky soil and you just need a little bit of fines, this is also a small rock filter. I poured all the rock in here and gave her a good shake. Now it comes all the fines and then you got rocks. What's that? Time for keeper, water keeper. Key what? Keeper. Wait, water? What? Water keeper? Is it refreshing? Oh my gosh. Is it yummy? Oh my gosh. Is it healthy? Oh my gosh. I had a new friend give us her keeper grains. If you wanna know what water keeper is, look it up. Pretty awesome stuff. And we're using our canned juice that we made over summer to mix it in. And we have a delicious new beverage that's healthy for you. If you see this video, it didn't kill us. Mm -hmm. mm, so Ooh. stoked. Ready for this? Mm -hmm. <sighs> wow. And no, you'll never find this from PepsiCo. Mm, that is pretty good. Pretty good. All right, husbands out there. Yeah. If your wife ever brings you water <laughs> kefir and says, drink this, I'm giving you the go ahead. Mm -hmm.